Ladies and gentlemen, mesdames, messieurs, mesdames, 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 señores y señoras, I am Special Andrew, I am back, this is game number three, and we are here in the grand finals of tonight's tournament, which is called what? The SC2 Vision Cup on this Wednesday evening. We got Cuba playing against Cars, and actually it's not evening, it's already the night, it's 15 past um, 12 here in Germany, but even though I did not sleep much, uh, I didn't do any sleeping in the afternoon, I was busy basically all day, having a lot of stuff to do, I'm still feeling it's just like 6pm in the evening, I'm still pumped up, I'm still in the mood to cast the shit out of those games, I'm still in the mood to play and stream some more first person games after this is over, I'm not sure what's wrong or what's everything okay with me, but I'm feeling, feeling pretty good at the moment, and um, yeah. Cast just manhandled Cuba in this last game. I mean, he basically did what he wanted to do with all those Mars Hellions. Mars Hellions once again, then with the Blue Flame, Marines here, then Battle Cruisers, everything, and just cast toyed with Cuba. So Cuba here, now on Shakura's Plateau, spawning on the top right location. Meanwhile, we have Cast spawning next to him at the top left location. And last game, we saw Cast playing on this map against the Zerg on the exact same spawning location. Locations. Cars went with a siege tank marine attack, having two siege tanks here, sieged on the low ground, having the marines do the damage. So now, Cuba doing smart thing number one, which is getting the tech buildings on the right side. If you're spawning on the right side, as a Zerg player, get your tech buildings on the right side. If you're spawning on the left side, get your tech buildings on the left side. And preferably on the bottom left side, or on the bottom right side, so Banshees, Void Trace, etc, etc, will not be able to harm your tech buildings. Siege tanks on the low ground will not be able to reach your tech buildings. And this is how you should do it. Um, Kaz is going for a Reaper right now. This Reaper here is produced in the barracks. And with this Reaper he wants to go for some scouting action, maybe kill one drone or two. We see a Queen is in production. The Queen will be finished in 40 seconds. But this will not be enough. Uh, the Reaper will have about 10 seconds where he can go for some damage. Now Kaz rearranging his barracks because he wants to free up the tech lab to go for the uh, factory as fast as possible uh, connected to a tech lab so let's follow this reaper around but the first queen will be out in like five seconds so one drone will go down for sure the question will be how many more drones will go down as well and looks like even small miss micro here by cars uh, getting attacked by the screen once he needs to move away and this reaper still got the 10 hp left so at least he can run away so um i would have expected him to do more damage but it's not always cuba doing the mistakes it looks like Cast doing a small mistake here, even though uh, he did not lose, lost a unit, he also did not kill a single unit. And the Reaper, if you're moving in in the opponent's base with the Reaper, you basically want to kill at least one single drone here. So let's take a look what else is he going to build. An uh, engineering bay in the middle, another barracks next to this command center where the factory is finished. Do we see a siege tank? Not just yet. And there we go. Siege tank number one is en route. And if we take a look at the resource station right now, we see cars having quite a lot of gas. Uh, saved up 350 gas is actually quite a lot. So I'm really, really curious where this is going uh, in terms of Spending his resources, of course, I would have expected him to go for the staff port, so most likely he will go for the same attack once again, even though now he will not be able, because yes, he knows the spawning pool is on the right side, he will not be able to kill a building here, but with a siege tank sieged up in those two locations here, uh, on the side, he will be able to at least, um, get rid of this extractor, kill those drones, and then of course he will be able to drop some marines on the high ground, and with those marines being dropped on the high ground, yes, he will be able to do quite some DPS here. So, um, Cuba, what is he doing? He's actually just uh, macroing like a crazy person, uh, being on 35 drones, having 9 more drones in production, the layer finished pretty soon, going for the double extractor here, and the natural, so looks like some muted play coming up by him. 
but the question of course is uh, will cars be able to be there just in time? There we see the two siege tanks and the medivac I was talking about, but there is Cuba with an overlord, so this separates the moderate uh, from the good place, having an overlord uh, seeing what is up in Cuba now. Oh, there's actually a medivac. So let's follow this medivac around a little bit and see how much damage he will be able to do. But now it's this only the medivac and that's about it. No marines incorporated in this drop so he will only be able to attack what? The uh, extractor and the drones mining here from this extractor and from this left mineral patch. And of course, if a Zerg player wants to go mute us, having um, denying him 25% of a possible gas income, oh sure, why not? It's quite a good thing to do. And there we see Cuba is going for another hatchery here at this uh, location. At the 4 o'clock. Uh, of course, this is a smart decision, even droning up more. And those two siege tanks might be in a lot of trouble because da -da 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 -da, here is uh, the spire. I was not zooming in fast enough. Here's uh, the spire on the right side. So, where are the mutas? The mutas are not in production just yet. And here comes the marines. Uh, seven mutas in production. Of course, seven mutas will be enough to take out those marines because, yes, the stim did not even start for cars. And cars starting the plus run quite a lot, uh, quite a long time time ago, but not even going for the plus one attack might not be the smartest choice. Cuba cannot attack there because of the siege tanks. The siege tanks here at nine kills, the other siege tank at one kills, and there are the mutas, and with the mutas out he just can attack those forces a wide array. With more marines being uh, arriving here and with more marines arriving Cuba has to pull back, more mutas popping out, more zerglings popping out as well, and we even have this one siege tank here on the high ground. Meanwhile, what is Karst doing? He's just producing more stuff, he was just focusing to get out those forces a little faster. Now this lair is even under attack. And what about the mutas? Just six mutas will not be enough. How many mutas does he have in total in addition to those two popping out? It will be just the eight mutas. Here are the zerglings moving in, siege tank will get taken out. What about the other marines? Um, not just yet, but he's focusing down the siege tank number two as well. But four mutas will not be enough to take out this third siege tank just because of the sheer amount of marines. Now the stim has started 40 seconds ago for cars. Meanwhile, this other hatchery is finished. And Cuba, is he going for more drones? Couple more drones, mainly zerglings, more mutas as well. And more creep tumors being placed. Of course, if you're getting attacked in your own main base, you want to have the creep spread it all over the place in your own base to be just uh, versatile enough with your forces. Now with Cuba having eight uh, mutas, he should be able to to uh, even maybe go for a snipe here on the medivac. This was on hold position. Good job by him. Um, he should be able to snipe the siege tank as well. Maybe should go for the drop and the overload speed because especially on this map, a drop is quite a powerful invention. Now uh, more marines being dropped here on the high ground and in the process even though he took out those marines he lost all of the zerglings uh, is down to seven mutas once again second siege tanks has been arrived here for cars and cars even got the uh, viking not even taking out this overload even though he uh, flew by this overload and cuba needs to watch out otherwise this overload is getting attacked and the overload is even going down once again Cuba doing a bit mistake but I like his decision to expand once again to the bottom right meanwhile those two siege tanks and uh Especially here, Commander Siege Tank. There he is, 23 kills, doing quite some damage. So it looks like we uh, might have a counter attack. Oh, do we? No, we do not. Actually, I'm blind. Uh, <laughs> So, uh, no counter attack just yet. Ah, here are the Mutas taking out the destructible rocks. And of course, with those destructible rocks being taken out, all, all he needs to do is just send in the Zerklings and deal uh, with the rest. Here are more Mutas, here are more Zerklings coming in. But, da 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 da, 
got quite a lot of units out. And does Cuba know about those forces? Yes, he does know about those forces. Now he's taking out these forces. Siege Tank 1 and Siege Tank 2 going down. And he knew about the Marines. Why is he not getting any bane links? He's just getting seven more drones was he not paying attention to the minimap or what is going on all those drones will go down he needs to run away with the drones maybe by himself some time for the more bane links but there are the stim marines and cuba once again doing a big mistake and will that be hit already because yes cast is up 2-0 and this is a best of five series where are the bane links no need for the bane links to revive cuba not paying attention to the minimap he just did not have the bane links out in time and GGing out of the game. So congratulations to Cast just manhandling man handling Cuba here without a problem, slapping him left and right. So congrats to him taking home the thirty bucks. And yeah, that's basically about it with the casting part for tonight. And mm, I'm just uh in the talk with the uh admins of the For Players Cup, maybe I will be casting the For Players Close Combat Cup. Uh, there's still some stuff to sort out. As soon as I know, I will let you know, of course, on the usual sources, which is my Facebook account, facebook.com slash specialandre. If you want to check out some more VODs, maybe check out my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash user slash specialandre. Or just, you will find every information you need on my webpage, andre.com, specialandre.net, and fuckyear.tv, and one more other other important thing is my own tournament and if you want to participate in my own tournament as a player it doesn't matter if you're high masters or low bronx league um, you can check this page it is bitsperbeat.com slash uh, andre there you can sign up thanks to sugar by the way for this awesome background here the logo in the top location and here the cigar box on the left side even says it's special andres isn't this awesome and um, you can sign up. The price pool will be a fifty dollars. Um, you will can get. Uh, you will be able to get another three hundred fifty to five hundred dollars in a eight man player invitational. Um, the price pool is sponsored by myself. Uh, and uh, some donations I received, so thank you very much to everyone who donated. Um, not just sure if we will be able to secure the $500 because the $500 prize pool will be uh, a magic wall, so to say, to get the best of the best. And um, that's of course my goal. We will have a couple of qualifier tournaments and then the main events. And Kaz, by the way, is one of the invites. He just uh, he confirmed his uh, participation in the tournament. So all the best players in the world. And of course, the tournament is starting next week, next Wednesday. So in six days, 18 hours, 31 minutes, and 54 seconds. <laughs>